Hello my soccer universe. I've been toying with the idea of making a review video a little bit sooner right after the cup games uh, but I didn't feel it right because you know I didn't want to wait for the second French cup, cup game which would have made it complete so it didn't work out all that well. Any case we are doing it now. Uh, quite some talking points this time around. A teeny bit more in France and at the craziest team of the entire world you know the big one in Paris. Um, but also a little bit in the Netherlands where, yes, I think the title race we can call done now. It is, I think, four or five uh, rounds to play and Fiat are enjoying an even bigger league than they had before the international break. And yeah, uh, Ajax is the only team that has still a tough game coming up. So I think uh, in that sense, first place is more or less gone. However, there was a very feisty uh, cup semi-final between Feyenoord and Ajax got twice suspended, loads of emotions running high and Ajax getting a little bit, a uh, teeny bit of revenge uh, for losing the title to Feyenoord. Uh, in France, as I said, uh, it is so much talk about PSG, especially after that horrific loss at home, uh, at, at, at home to Lyon. I have to say, after an international break, I think every team is particularly vulnerable. However, with PSG, it's a little bit of a pattern because they have been pretty abject after the World Cup. They are the team, I would argue, that was hit the most by, by the World Cup because all their stars were actually focused on that World Cup. And that's why you could make an argument. That's why those stars played so brilliantly in the first half of the season. And now they're completely falling off. We had... Messi being booed at home among rumors that he's now not extending his contract at PSG because he doesn't want to take the 25% pay cut. Yeah, I guess he will go hungry uh, if he does do that. Then um, rumors that he goes back to Barcelona or wherever it's wide open. All I can say is if he goes back to Barcelona, this is the most idiotic move that both sides can do. Rekindle the spirit. I I honestly don't want to see Messi back at Bar Barcelona because for whatever I'm being critically of that Barcelona project, at least they went for the youth. Bringing back Messi will not help you. But again, he's a club legend. Uh, so that was the Messi side. Then Mbappe, there was a commercial made for the season ticket holders that had only Mbappe in there. No Neymar, no Messi, by the way. And Mbappe, as he is wont to do, went very vocal and said, this is not uh, um, FC Kylian Saint-Germain. They settled that one. And yes, seemingly they have settled it, it enough that they got a little bit of a win. Uh, kind of settling things a little bit in the league, steering the ship in the right direction. But there's a huge clash come, come, come up because... While Lance had a little dip in form maybe before the international break, they came roaring back and Marseille have not been picking up the points. So Marseille, I think, is more or less out of, out of, out of picture, but Lance is within six points of PSG. PSG is very likely to drop a game here or there uh, at the moment that they are. If Lance can keep that up and win the head-to-head, -head, which will be in Paris, they won on the first day of the year already against PSG, I think they could make a run for it and it's a little bit sad because yet I don't have a Lance shirt but I think they can make a run for it. Uh, would I be surprised if they have no, uh, do I think it will happen? No. Also I think PSG is gonna win that title because in the end they will uh, get it all together. But it is so funny, the season for PSG is over and it couldn't be over sooner. Ah, and then that was the last thing that uh, Nice fans of course insulted Galtier who also got uh, insulted by, P uh, by PSG fans. That club is just unbelievably stupid. Unbelievably stupid. You have basically the French League sewn up if you get out of the Champions League, which you regularly do, because you're just such a train wreck. The season's over. And then you're hanging on, and then you have to hope that the superstars are, are helping. And yes, I think injuries played a part in it. Uh, I actually would be really, uh, I would have a big smile if Lance will win the winner title. Not only because Lille just did it two seasons ago and it was rather exciting uh, and they're the big rivals. So basically, I yeah, kind of to balance out things 
and it will change things up and yeah that's where we are however i want to start in the netherlands and i want to start with a dutch cup these guys psv who actually had a really really good week if you would like like to say uh not that it wasn't expected that they make it to auto frank and spakenburg uh gutierrez and van anholt getting the two goals just before and just after the half uh green uh pulls one back but you know it was never really in doubt this would have been another major miracle however the big talk is definitely all about feyenoord playing ajax and it was played at the decoy i think expectations were ru running high especially the way feyenoord had won and they have this never say die attitude um so it was high that Feyenoord will do one over Ajax, Ajax again. The one thing it has to say, I mean, thankfully Feyenoord got that win over Ajax because so far they have had not uh, won any other uh, clashes against PSV or um, or Ajax, but they won the big one that will probably give them the title and they have been rather consistent. The game was really, really a tight one. Had to be stopped early already because of flares uh, pulling Fogel over the pitch. Uh, then um, Tadic, Ajax really came out to play and Tadic scores an early goal. However, then it was an onslaught by Feyenoord who missed a few chances where you already think, oh, if you don't make these, you're not going to win. But Jimenez uh, gets just before the break the equalizer and you really thought that this is now going to propel Feyenoord over uh, Ajax. However, it was not meant to be because right after that, Klassen comes back and puts Ajax back in the lead. And that shocked Feyenoord a little bit. Feyenoord, though, got back over the emotion. And then there was a, a flare between Tadic and Kokchu, the two captains going at each other. That made everything go loose. The, um, the fans were throwing stuff on the pitch. And I think it was a lighter that hit David Klassen on the back of his head and you could see in real time how there was more and more and more blood running down his bald neck uh, uh head not neck uh and the game of course had to be abandoned and for quite a while and i was wondering because at the first one they had all these big nets up there and now for this one security Security, this is not a game, the, even if there are no away fans allowed, this is not a game uh, to be messed with because there's so much rivalry between these two clubs. So it took about half an hour to get the game back on, on, on track, but I have to say uh, the game was more or less done uh, at the point. The, the, the whole flow was gone. Um, Klassen had to come off relatively soon after the restart because he just felt a little bit, although I felt, uh, yeah, maybe he wanted to try, but I felt he could have come off sooner if if you were, were to ask me. Uh, Feyenoord then tried to create, but it was rather late. And it was a little bit too little too late. And Ajax, as I say, get one over and are now in the final in a replay between PSV and Ajax from the last Cup final, which of course will also probably be played at the Cup. That's going to be a, a very entertaining game, I would assume. And this is the one, this is really for a trophy. And last season I said uh, when PSV won over Ajax that this might signal some change. The change is happening, however, not as f what I would, would have expect because I really thought the PSV will do something. Um, in the league, but of course they also lost a whole lot of big uh, players. But in the in the league, PSV got a four to win at Nijmegen. However, um, while they had a four nil uh, lead, it was Tanene who had for Nijmegen with an outstanding game, scoring one, uh, oh no, scoring two goals uh, and brilliant goals at that. Probably the best performance on the pitch. However, his team is not good, good enough, and so Luke De Jong, uh, Boscali, Fierman, and again Luke De Jong already get the goals and then the big so surprise and the one that probably sealed the title for Feyenoord a uh of one part is, is that Ajax only played a nil nil to go ahead Eagles and then they win the Rotterdam Derby against Sparta but that was a rather tight one uh Peixar gives them an early lead but then Pinto with a wonderful strike in a 33rd minute equalizes and then they even get a penalty that Van Kroy uh misses in the uh, just before the half time and second half it was all Feyenoord 
Onslaught, 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 and Jimenez and uh, Hanko get the two goals. That's Feyenoord is now very much in, uh, you know, in control, total control of the title hopes. And even the pass being with and again, PSV getting a rather easy win, 4-0 over Excelsior. Although um, Excelsior was in the game in the first, first seven, uh, um, despite Luc de Jong scoring early, people were not happy. Should have been a much higher scorer, but then very late on, Xavi Simons, Fabi Silva and Gutierrez make it a good scoreline. But that was a tighter game for most of the time. Um, Ajax didn't keep it tight. Uh, <laughs> it was 2-0 already have through to Berghaus Gold and Bergwijn and Taylor add two more. And uh, Sparta Rotterdam actually get one over AZ uh, have has to be said. And Feyenoord do the same thing, winning by four uh, goals. Uh, uh, four goals. It was 5-0 or in the 60 first uh, with an own goal, Igor Peshaw uh, scoring to Hartmann and uh, Jimenez again getting on the scoring sheet before Lopete pulls one back. So in the league now, Feyenoord having a real win winning streak. They are now eight points clear with six rounds to go. That usually should be enough. That should be enough. Uh, and I think we, uh, as, as we see, uh, it will soon it will soon be over if they get the um, um, wins done. And I think they have a relatively good schedule as well. Uh, it's also interesting, it's now between Ajax and uh, PSV. They are level on points, so you have that battle going on as well, in addition to the Cup uh, far Final. But um, can Ajax even make it in the Champions League? That That is a real, real threat at this moment. And then, yeah, on the bottom, Groningen seems like a goner right now. Uh, in the expected standing, um, yeah, you see it will be Ajax just ahead of PSV, but it's really, really, really tight P and Fey not having won the title. I give you the next uh, two rounds upcoming. Note that there is a makeup game um, in the midweek uh, next week. Uh, on the first uh, weekend, there is nothing really exciting, I think, for the big ones, however, then uh, thereafter it's exciting. We have PSV against Ajax, we have Feyenoord against Utrecht, those are two big games. Uh, PSV Ajax, that's for the Champions League. And if that's a draw and Feyenoord wins, then I think we can call this title absolutely settled and done. Let's go over to France, and in France I also want to start with the Cup. Um, we have not again in the Cup Final. That was maybe uh, after the draw a little bit expected, but they pulled out loss already. And then uh, they play against Lyon, who this is the one chance for Lyon to get actually into European football. However, not controlled that game and scored a brilliant winner through Ludovic Plus. If you haven't seen it, it's a cross in his with his back to the goal. Controls it with his chest, makes the turn, controls it with the shoulder and lets it fall on his foot and puts it into it. An absolute brilliant goal. Should have been probably more for Nantes after that, uh, you know, fan storm the pitch says celebrating. They are going back to the Stade de France. Well, they face two lose who beat uh, on a C as a uh, Ligue 2 side. 2-1. Yeah, it was 1-1 uh, just before the half. But in the end, it's uh, Shaibi in the 85th minute who get the winner for Toulouse. So it's not against prom newly promoted Toulouse. I think it's an intriguing final. Um, I have to say that the French Cup is probably the worst looking comp competition from not numbering style to that all the teams have to wear the same sponsors, which very often doesn't work out. For Nantes against Lyon, it actually, I think it did work out somewhat. Um, but on the other side, it's a very exciting comp, 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 comp competition because uh, there are a lot of uh, surprises. So in that sense, you know, give or take with the French Cup. Um, going over to Ligue 1, where we already talked about the main stories uh, off the field, must say only manager won one like a small P in being down uh, early on. Uh, Gwendouzi penalty equalizes before the half. Uh, not going anywhere. Lance get a big win at Stade Rennes, uh, which keeps the, uh, which uh, kind of allowed them temporarily to close the gap on PSG. Uh, Openda getting that one, uh, little three one over Lorient. Um, then uh, Stade Rennes continuing the great with three 0 win over uh, Nantes. 
So uh, that story is also, and then that was an absolute crazy game. And I was actually happy that I had this on. It was not my main focus, but I had, I had it on. It was a really entertaining game between Monaco and Strasbourg. When Monaco took a uh, lead through Vandersen, however, um, a little bit out of nowhere, Strasbourg turned around through uh, Motiba. And then an uh, own goal by Maripan. Just what happened and the Strasbourg even scored another one that was a uh, chocolate for offside. Strasbourg actually looked good and they definitely need the points because they're in serious relegation trouble at this point. However, after they have uh, Monaco picked themselves up, Benzegir, Diop and Fofana had the game turned, 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 turned around within 10 minutes of, of the half. Fofana is a sent off, but there's only one goal to be pulled back for Strasbourg. And then Parisian horror show. I saw a few times, you know, uh, Mbappé dart darting. Maybe they were called for off offset, but then it was all Lyon. You know, like I said, missed the penalty. Uh, Barcola though gets uh, after after the half the go ahead goal, and there was absolutely nothing from PSG. Messi easily the worst man on the pitch. Of course, he just came from our Argentina chat like blah blah blah. Every everything not going right there as well. So, in that sense, Lance had closed the gap and they even put more pressure on PSG by winning 2-1 over Strasbourg. A rather routine performance. Frankowski and Medina having all 2-2-0 in Strasbourg again. Getting it back late, uh, but again have, having another player sent off um, for foul and unsportsmanlike con 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 conduct. But I thought that Lance had so much control of, of, the, of the game, they might really make a challenge. Uh, kind of surprising result that Angers won nil over Lille. You know, Angers is a team that's more or less already ready gone. And then PSG go to Nice, get a 2 0 win with Messi scoring. Uh, Nice hitting twice the wall would work. One basically fell just behind the line, but not all full of all that. There were some really weird ones in there. And Sergio Ramos, after a messy corner, had it in the 76 and settles that game. But it was a much, much tighter game. But a vital win for PSG because they need that win. Do you still find it funny that Messi assists Ramos? You know, this was Barcelona, Real Madrid, Druid, Druid, Captain. Those two should not be allowed to play with, with each other. But again, PSG keeping loss at bay. Then uh, Lyon, after the uh, losing the cup, get another big win. So they have beaten PSG, they have beaten uh, uh, Rennes again. Despite being 1-0 down at, at the half, but then Toulouse, Lacazette and Barcola again turned to turn around and Lyon oh, actually looked really, really good if it wasn't for that loss in, in, in the cup. Um, we had another entertaining game uh, for Nantes, a 2-2 against Monaco where they were down 2-0 at the half and then two late goals, uh, Mustafa Mohamed and again Ludovic Blas, nah, late 65th and 78th, uh, leveled that game and Marseille only a nil against Lorient, Marseille is unfortunately not going anywhere. I don't think they will be able to make a title challenge. It is still very much PSG, but it's only six points. And as, as I said, there will be the head-to-head -head coming up this uh, weekend, we'll, as we will we'll see, which could make it a whole lot tighter. Eight games to play for sure. Monaco um, might actually, I think Monaco could uh, catch Mar uh, Marseille. But let's see about that. And Lille also kind of hanging in there, but that loss against Angers will probably hurt. hurt. But with start rent being bad, yeah, maybe Lyon can make a run for Europe. We gotta, we, we, we gotta see. Note that it's between Nantes and Toulouse for a Europa League spot in the French Cup. So only the top five from the league will get in. Um, if you look at the expected, uh, it is basically a, conf a confirmation of where we are currently. Not many changes. It's just we lost on Marseille, finishing second spot. Uh, PSG still should win this at least on mathematically rather easily. But uh, this does not take into account that those two. The team is an entire mess. Saturday PSG loss is all you need, you need to know. Saturday evening watch PSG loss. Uh, that's the that's the chance to get a title race or not. I think uh, Stade Rennes against Stade Rennes could also be as well as to lose Lyon. I think I think there are quite some interesting early games. The late games not so much, and then we have an Olympico coming up the week after. So that's it from me from these two leagues. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, 
I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!